Hey guys, I'm back with another video about the 4-in-1 module from Banggood. This time I'm going to be installing it in the Turnigy 9XR Pro. Uh, I'm going to show you how to uh, basically install it as well as uh, flash it with the Sky ERNX firmware and do some sample model and radio configurations as well as uh, bind it to a model itself. So we're going to start off by talking about the 4-in-1 module. For those who don't know, the 4-in-1 module allows your transmitter to talk many protocols like DSM, SEMA, Hubson, etc. making it a universal transmitter. It incorporates uh, the CC2500, NRF24, A7105 as well as the CR, CYRF6936 RF chips all into one. These are the most common RF chips used by most of the protocols in the RC hobby today. The 4-in-1 module is pretty much plug and play for any transmitter that has a uh, module bay on the back without having to do any uh, soldering or physical modifications to the transmitter itself. I installed my 4 in module by putting it in a 3D printed case. However, you can just plug it into the empty bay without one. Um, it's just a matter of uh, putting maybe some foam, using some double-sided tape, and then making sure it doesn't move around. But I decided to use the uh, 3D printed case instead because it makes it a lot cleaner and I also can you know, basically move my module between the, the various transmitters I have, like my Tyrannus, uh, easier. Because it can run in PPM mode, it should work with almost any radio. If your transmitter doesn't have a module bay, you have to find some way of soldering it, soldering it to your radio, so it's best to stick to radios that have a module compartment on the back. It also works in serial mode with transmitters with uh, native support in the firmware. Serial mode is preferred since it's easy to change the protocol in the menus without having to actually touch the dials on the back of the 4-in-1 module itself. I'll also in this video address some of the questions I've been asked about the 4-in-1 modules like the differences between PPM mode and serial as well as the uh, differences between the MCU base plates uh, when you buy the uh, one module from Banggood, there is you have to select one of the three and people often confuse and wonder which one they should select for their transmitter. The 4-in-1 module is designed to work with a variety of different radios and in order to make it as universal as possible, it runs in PPM mode which most radios support. It's also capable of running in serial mode and that's the one I'll, I prefer using because it's supported natively and you can uh, basically program it in the menu itself. In, PPM mode, it is the most compatible since it works with most radios like I mentioned. You, um, you basically have to select the protocol on the back of the module by turning a dial and uh, corresponding to the protocol, right? So by default, when you buy the 4-in-1 module, it is in PPM mode. And in order to change that, you have to solder two pads with, with two pads on the uh, module itself, which I'll show you. In this video, I'll show you how to put it into serial mode, which is probably the most common and easiest way to use the 4-in-1 module. Basically, it involves soldering these two pads here, the TX and RX pads, on the back of the module. It's very simple. It's not too difficult to do. Um, once you have those pads uh, connected, uh, you're in serial mode. When you have a transmitter like the Turnigy 9XR Pro installed with uh, ER Sky 9X firmware that supports the 4-in-1 module natively, you can select the protocols in the menu. When you purchase the 4-in-1 uh, module from Banggood, you actually have a choice of picking uh, different base plates from a JR, FR Sky, as well as Fly Sky. Now the differences are not, actually not in the hardware, they're physically the same, there is no physical difference in, in the, the shape or the size of the, the actual module itself. The only difference is how it's programmed in, the, um, in terms of the, the channel order. Um, by most radios today are, I think, AETR. That's most common for most radios. And, and some radios like JR or Spectrum, they may use TAER. And in the case of the Turner G9XR Pro, by default, it uses RETA. The channel order is how the aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder is mapped to channel one, two, three, four, respectively. So if you're going to use it in PPM mode, uh, it's very important that you choose the right base plate for your uh, particular brand. Uh, however, if you're going to use it in serial mode, it doesn't matter which version you get. In, in my example, for example, I bought the base plate based on FR Sky, which uses AETR. 
Now I'm using it, the same exact module inside the Turnigy 9XR Pro. And because I'm using it in serial mode, I can change that through the firmware. It doesn't really matter whether I have uh, a base plate from another brand. Completely doesn't matter at all. So with that in mind, pick the right one for your, uh, for your purpose. If you're gonna use it in PPM mode, make sure you pick based on brand because most transmitters today have a JR module bay. So the FR Sky, for example, Tyrannus has a JR module uh, uh, bay as well as the Turnage 9 xr Pro. It uses a JR bay as well. So in short, if you're using it in PPM mode, pick the base plate based on your brand because each brand will have a different channel order. If you're gonna use it in serial mode, it does not matter which base plate you use. After installing your 4-in-1 module into your 9XR Pro, we're gonna install the firmware that natively supports it. Out of the box, my 9XR Pro came with ERSky 9X uh, firmware re revision 212, which does not have support for the 4-in-1 module in serial mode natively. So we're gonna go download that from the website and we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to update it easily through the micro SD card slot. Fortunately for us, the Turn G9XR Pro does come with a micro SD card slot as well as the micro SD card itself. It is a four gigabyte model and what we're gonna do is copy the firmware to that micro SD card and then we're gonna flash it. I'll have a link to the firmware for ER Sky 9X uh, in the description. Go to the website, download the latest version and then copy it to your firmware folder on the micro SD card and then we're gonna to go to the next step, which is to actually initiate the flashing of the firmware. Flashing the firmware on the 9XR Pro is very similar to how it's done on the Tyrannus as well. Uh, you basically hold down the trim buttons on the bottom and then power it on. And as you can see, you see two bin files, one of which you downloaded from the website in the description, which is the latest one, uh, revision 219X3. What you wanna do is uh, move down to it and hold down the menu button and then it should pop up asking you if you wanna flash it, and then you hit the menu button again and say yes. The process is really quick, does it in a few seconds, and you have the latest version of the firmware which supports uh, the uh, 4 one module in serial mode natively, so you can select the protocols in the menu. And the next thing we're gonna do is check that it is installed. To check your uh, firmware revision, hold down the left arrow key, and then you'll be brought to your radio settings, this is where you can check the version. Uh, move down to version and then hit the menu button. And as you can see, we have updated it with version uh, 219. And to verify that we do have the new protocols uh, accessible in the model setup, just go to your model setup screen, uh, scroll down all the way down to protocol. And this is where you should be able to find the newly added protocols uh, which uh, are supported on the 4-in-1. So uh, what you want to do is turn off the internal module because we're not going to use that. Enable the multi-module by selecting it and then you can run through the various protocols that it supports. After flashing, we want to set the default channel order by going into the radio settings and then going down to controls. And this is where you can set the channel order and uh, make sure that it's on AETR. Next, we're gonna do a simple four channel setup by uh, creating a new model, select an empty slot and then select it. Hold down the menu button and then go to model setup. The very first thing we're gonna do is name the model. Next, you wanna go in and select the protocol for your model. So like I mentioned before, you go here and select multi and then run through the protocol that you want to use. In this case, we're gonna be using the SEMA protocol. Select that and usually a protocol will have a subtype and in my case, I'm just gonna use CMAX. And you wanna turn on the auto bind. I'll talk about, about that later. And then the next step is to go into the mixer Here are the four channels that you want to create. Aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder with 100% weight. Here is the limits, and this is the area where you want to um, 
If you need to reverse your channels, this is where you do it. Typically, the aileron, elevator, or rudder will be reversed, and in that case, you can change the direction of it by uh, inversing them, by enabling it or disabling it. Expo and DR are obviously for exponential and dual rates. Next, I'm going to create a safety switch for the throttle channel, which is channel 3. I'm going to uh, assign it to the throttle cutoff switch at the top left. And when that is enabled, I won't be able to uh, fly the quadcopter. So this is a safety feature. Uh, make sure that it is negative 100. And I add this to all my models just for safety in case uh, I accidentally bump into the throttle stick or something. So um, this is highly recommended that you do that for all your models as well. And that's it for a simple four channel setup. Next, I'll show you how to back up your model so that you can share it. Uh, go to the model selection screen and then hold down uh, the menu button on the model you want to back up and then hit the menu button again. The EEPM file will be saved to the micro SD card slot and then you can share it or back it up to another location. If you want to uh, import a model, you can go back to the menu selection screen and then find an empty slot and then hit restore. And this will allow you to import EP EEPM files from your micro SD card slot that you might have downloaded from the internet. Um, as you can see, if you go back into the menu selection screen, you will see that it is imported. Now, this is a great way if you don't want to start your models from scratch and you want to just basically download something that other people have done. Uh, this way you can just um, import it or back it up and share it. Next, I'll show you how to bind your model to your 9XR Pro using the auto bind feature. If you saw the protocol selection screen, you'll see that there was an option to enable auto bind, which basically means that when you turn on your transmitter, it will automatically try to connect with your model. And in this case, it worked. You can see that the light went steady and it is bound. Now, not all models support auto bind. So um, in that case, I'll show you another way, which is the manual way of doing it. Another way to bind your model is to actually set it in bind mode through the menu. So go to model setup and then scroll all the way down to protocol. Then go down to bind. And what you want to do is plug up the battery to your quadcopter. You'll see that it's flashing very fast and hold down the menu button to initiate the bind. And you will see that it is Bound when the lights are steady. Exit out of bind mode and turn off the throttle cutoff and you can see that it is working. So this is the Turnergy 9XR Pro with the 4-in-1 multi-module. At around $60 or $70, the 9XR Pro is definitely the, uh, the best radio for your money. Um, Couple that with the $40 4-in-1 module, you have a radio that has most of the features found in a Tyrannus but at the fraction of the cost and you also have the ability to speak tons of protocols. Pretty much all the protocols that are available in the RC hobby world are in your hands right now and the more protocols are added every day. Since I own a few multi-protocol, um, multi-module transmitters now like the FR Sky Tyrannus, the Evo 10, and the Trinity 9 Rockstar Pro, I really don't see uh, any reason to get a uh, Volcara Devo radio anymore. If you're looking for a budget radio, the Trinity 9 Rockstar Pro with the 4 in 1 module is the way to go. The Devo 10 being in the middle, I really can't recommend it to anybody. Um, so, uh, my opinion if you have the money, spend it on an FR Sky Tyrannus. If you are on a budget, get the Trinity 9 Rockstar Pro with the 4 in 1 module, you won't be disappointed. Anyways, this is it for the video. If you like what you see, comment, like, or subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.